Hey there, FS122. This is your instructor, Scott, and I'm going to do a little scanning demo for you here. Uh, basically, I'm hooked up to the um, scanner here at school. There are many scanners. Uh, they're all very good scanners. The Epson is very good. These scanners will do um, basically opaque scanning, which is you put a paper in and scan that, or you can also scan slides. And um, let me show you a few things. First of all, go to the right-hand side of your, well, actually, on the, if you're on the Mac, it's going to be on the right-hand side. There it is over there. And if you're on the PC, it's going to be over on the left-hand side someplace. But you'll find this Epson Scan software icon. So double-click that. And now, if it comes up in this mode, this is fine. You can see I did a little bit of a scan work earlier. Um, but if it comes up in, hang on. If it comes up in like full auto mode or home mode, uh, these stink. This is what it might show up as. Uh, anything that's automatic, I, I don't trust. And you guys are professionals now, so that's why we're going to go to, with professional mode. So let me explain some of these settings here. Now, I realize that this looks like the cockpit of a 747 airplane, but um, if you follow a few of these directions, this is going, actually going to go pretty smooth. My philosophy of scanning is that all I want is a good basic scan because any cleanup work or any contrast work that needs to be done, I do in Photoshop where I know those tools and I trust them. There are some tools down here that are similar to what we might have going in Photoshop. It, yeah, they might seem similar, but you know, I'm used to the way Photoshop works. So pretty much I don't mess with this stuff. Uh, there's a little descreening demo I'll do later. Now, um, hopefully I, I have shot some video to show you what the scanners look like and how to work them. Uh, just know that these scanners here at school can also do slide scanning, which means that the lid of the scanner um, has glass in it because there's machinery up there to scan basically through a transparent slide or transparent film. And uh, so just be careful when you place your artwork on a scanner. Don't jam it down because you've got glass in that lid. It can be uh, very destruct destructive. Okay, so let's start at the top here and talk about what these settings are. Now, mostly you probably won't play with this stuff because reflective is the kind of scanning we'll do 95% of the time or even 99% of the time. And that's basically putting some sort of paper with a drawing or some sort of paper with a photograph in the scanner. So reflective is what it's called. If you put film in, then you'll do, a, you know, that kind of a thing. Okay, uh, document table, there's only one option, so don't even mess with it. Now you've got two options here for auto exposure type, photo and document. Well, again, 99% of the time you'll be scanning a photo versus scanning some sort of written document, you know, like a letter you get in the mail from, the, from your credit company. So just stick with photo, you'll be happy. Now there are two settings here we want to play with, and that is the image type. Okay, now if you look at this pop-up here, uh, there's actually quite a number of things here. 48-bit color, 24-bit color, color smoothing, 16-bit grayscale, 8-bit grayscale, etc. etc. Um, I'll make your life very easy here. Anytime you scan, just do it in 24-bit color. Even if you're planning on your final artwork being grayscale, remember you can always downgrade your stuff and your images in Photoshop. So just get in the habit of doing 24-bit color. The results will be uh, colors that will show up in the millions of colors that the human eyes can see. The only time you really need to do 48-bit colors if you're doing something for a high-end film, you know, like a Spielberg movie, which I don't think we're there yet. So um, just do it at 24-bit color. Now the resolution. Anytime you see the word resolution, I want you to think of the word quality. Well, the document we want to scan, should it be high quality or low quality? Well, uh, for my money, uh, again, 99% of the time I want a high quality scan because if I don't need all that extra information that's being scanned in, I can always crank it down in Photoshop to whatever my needs are. So I'd rather start out high. Uh, here's a phrase I'll say quite a bit, the elevator only goes down, which means that you can't upgrade the quality of an image once it's been scanned. Okay, You have to start with a high quality image, then you can downgrade. You can't ever scan you know and make it go higher uh, it just doesn't work so let's just start out with a high quality now 300 is actually high quality now look at all these different DPI by the way DPI that's dots per inch and there's another term you'll run across called PPI which is pixels per inch okay for our purposes those terms mean the same thing okay and for for our money uh, really it's just a quality setting so 
look at these different quality settings here. Obviously, we're starting here at 300, but you can go down to 50, and you can go as high as 12,800. That is huge. Okay, it's like taking the cover of a of a magazine and setting it for 12,000. Your magazine would be about mm, the scan, the file would be roughly I don't know five or six stories high, kind of big. So uh, we don't need that. 300 will probably get you through. 99.99% of whatever you're working on. So we're going to start there. Okay. Now, uh, typically, actually, you'll find this one closed, the target size. Well, actually, we don't even want to play with this until we do something first. So the first thing I want to do is, anytime you sit down with a scanner, go ahead and do the preview. In fact, you don't even have to set any of these settings. You can just do preview, and it'll do this kind of a thing over here. Okay. Now, I just, I just grabbed a catalog here that I can just scan. And... Uh, what we do with the preview is we use the preview to decide where exactly our final scan is going to be. This preview is just an idea of, you know, just giving us a preview. <laughs> There's no other way to go around that. Uh, so I'm going to click and drag, and I'll put a little uh, rectangle there, which is marching ant selection. In fact, I might even make that a little bit bigger. Okay, cool. Okay, maybe a little bit higher. There we go. So I'm not scanning the entire page. I don't need the entire page, right? Okay. Although I don't want to make that edge tangent. So I, by the way, whenever you scan, I try to scan a little bit bigger than I need so that, again, I can always crop it down and make it smaller in Photoshop. So give yourself, you know, extra, is what I call handles. Okay. So um, there's the area I'm going to scan. Now I need to go over here. Now, look at this. This is the document size. This is how big these marching ants are. It's 4.03 inches wide by 5.44 inches high. Okay? And that's great. But what if we want to scan a little bit larger? We can make our, we can make our file that we're creating even larger. So let's open this target size thing up. And right now, the scaling is set to 100%. Well, what if we highlight the field and type in 200%? Well, now 403 has now become 806. So we're doubling that size, and the height has become 10.88 from 5.44 inches. Okay? So now when I scan, it's going to be actually a larger image than the original. That is possible. Um, you might encounter some resolution limitations because you're scanning paper, but I think you'll be okay for the most part. Okay? So basically that's roughly it. Now we're not going to change anything down here right now. All we're going to do is now head for the scan button. Actually, I take that back. Let's, let's not scan it 200%. That'll just take forever. Okay, I'll just scan it 100% and scan. Now here you get the final window. Uh, the first time you, you see this, uh, the radio button will probably there, be there at pictures which means that when you scan, the final document that's, cr that's created from the uh, scanner will go into the pictures folder, or it could go, could go into the documents folder. Well, I'm far more lazy. I just put it on the desktop, so I can just go grab it right there and take a look at it. Okay. Now, this next section is, it wants you to give it a name. Well, a previous scan that I had done was Skull, and it was an x-ray. Whenever you have the opportunity to name something, please give it a descriptive name. So I'll call this... Uh, catalog sorry I had to sneeze there catalog bottles and there's also an incrementer usually this starts out at one or at one and sometimes when you're scanning stuff you wind up scanning kind of the same image over and over again so rather than give it a fresh title every time you can increment which sort of goes against my previous advice against um, giving a descriptive name here. So uh, use this, but be smart about it, which means try to be more descriptive than using numbers. Okay, now the last part here is what is the file that we're going to use here? What is the final uh, image format? Okay, now uh, most of you are probably very familiar with the JPEG file format. It's used on the internet. You see it every place. Well, it's really kind of bad form to to scan using JPEG, okay? Because JPEG is a compressed file format, which means that the file created 
is not as clean as it could be. They, they, the um, compressor throws out a lot of pixels and then tries to kind of blur things together in such a way to fool the human eye. Well, that's not as clean as it could be. Now, there's a lot of other file formats here, and I'm just going to boil it right down. Anytime you scan, use TIFF. Okay? TIFF is an uncompressed file format, which means whatever you scan, that is what you're going to get in your file. Okay? Now, I will tell you, I do, I do scan to JPEG sometimes, and about the only time I really scan to JPEG is when whatever I'm scanning is just for a quickie, you know, let's see how it looks, or let's, you know, scan something in and then show it to my client. I'll just scan three or four JPEGs in, email in my client, you know, and say, how do you like this as like the basis for what I'm doing? And they'll say oh, yes or no, depending on what they like. But um, when you're doing high quality work, uh, let's just stick with TIFF. That stands for Tagged Image File Format. Not, not that you care, but uh, TIFF is an uncompressed format, and that is what we want. Okay, so we've got our location of our file coming up. We've got our name. We've got an increment of one, and we've got the file format. Let's click OK. And I'm going to click OK and stop the movie and come back in a second.